Hey there! If you're new to the channel, welcome! And if you're returning, thanks for coming back. In today's video, I'll be taking you on a step-by-step -step guide of how to properly clean and maintain a planted aquarium. Some people seem to think this is a difficult and annoying thing to do, but if you have the right tools and the right amount of patience, it's a lot easier than you might think. So for today's video, I've got a little UNS 3N nano tank that I've been avoiding maintenance on for the last couple of weeks for the purpose of this video. So as you can see, there's some trimming I'll need to do in this setup, as well as some algae removal on the glass and the hardscape. So let's go grab all the tools we need and go through the process of cleaning this thing up. But before we get started, we need to talk about what tools we need to get this job done. All right, so let's talk tools. One of the most important things to help the maintenance process go smoothly while cleaning a planted tank is the tools you use. Your tools can single-handedly make or break whether the task is easy or hard. Some of the tools you'll need are as follows. An algae scraper, or some sort of old credit card that you can use to scrape the glass. An old toothbrush. Please make sure you don't use your regular toothbrush and you go buy a dollar store one that you can use specifically for aquascapes. A pair of aquascaping scissors. In today's video, I'll be using the UNS spring-loaded scissors some tubing to help siphon out the water, and last but not least, a bucket for the dirty water to siphon into. All right, so step one to maintaining a tank is observation. Before you get your hands in the tank and start messing with things, it's important to have a game plan. Sit in front of the tank and really observe what needs assistance and what doesn't. If a plant or section of the tank is doing well, then don't worry about it and let nature take its course. Once you've got your game plan set in stone, it's time to grab your tools and move on to step two, cleaning the glass. The first part of step two is turning off your filter. You don't have to do this right now, but I personally prefer it so that I don't have algae and detritus floating around the tank while I'm working. So after the filter is turned off, the next step I like to do is clean the glass. This way, when I'm doing the rest of the maintenance session, I have a perfectly clear, unobstructed view of what I'm working with. You can clean this in two ways. One, by using an algae scraper, or you can grab an old credit card or gift card and scrape it off with that. Now, some people maintain their tanks in a different order than what I'm teaching you today, but it's important that you just create your own workflow in the way you prefer to do it. There is no right or wrong way to do this. So in the case of this tank, there's some spot algae on the glass. So I'm gonna grab my trusty algae scraper, which is basically just a razor blade attached to a stick. And I'm gonna scrape it off by going up and down all the way across from side to side on the tank. Once I've got the main sections of the glass cleared of algae, I grab that toothbrush and I like to hit the corners. The reason I don't use the algae scraper on the corners is that's where the silicone is that holds the tank together. So I don't want to damage that silicone in any way. And using a soft bristled toothbrush allows me to scrape that algae off without risking any damage to the silicone and glass. Now that the glass is clean, it's time to move on to step three. Step three is the removal of algae on the hardscape and plants. This tank is pretty heavily planted, so there's not a lot of algae on the hardscape or plants, but for the areas where there is, I'll grab that toothbrush again and just gently brush it off. I like to brush semi-firmly. 
not too hard where I can hurt the hardscape or the plants, but enough to remove the algae. If the algae is super hard to remove, then I'll grab a cheap little electric toothbrush and that usually does the trick. So now that we got the algae removed, it's time to move on to step four. Once you get to step four, it's time to bust out those scissors we mentioned earlier and get ready to start trimming plants. This tank doesn't need a ton of trimming right now, but there are a few spots that could use it. So very carefully trim the plants stem by stem at your desired height. I like to trim the plants right above the nodes where the leaves come off the stem. It's important to remember that wherever you cut, two more stems will grow out of that original stem. So keep that in mind when you're cutting. Once you've got your plants all trimmed up to your desired look and height, it's time to take those cuttings and put them in the bucket that we're about to use. So by now you should have done four steps. You should have created a game plan, cleaned the algae, removed algae off hardscape and plants, and trimmed your plants. So now, Let's move on to step five. Step five is the final step in this process, and that's performing a water change. Now, since you've spent the last couple minutes stirring up detritus and algae in the tank and just messing with the whole system, it's important that you do a water change to keep this system fresh and balanced. So now that we're in the final step, this is where you're gonna need that tubing and that bucket. What you're gonna do is place that bucket down on the floor below the tank, and then make sure one of the ends of the tube is inside that bucket. Here's a little pro tip for you. If you save the plant weights that you get when you buy new plants, you can attach them to the bottom of the tube, and that ensures that the tubing stays in the bucket at all times, and you don't spill water all over your floor. The other part of the tube, you're gonna stick inside the tank and let a couple inches droop down under the surface of the water. Now we're gonna create the siphon. Simply pinch the tube, creating a suction point, and while keeping the end of the tube in the water, bring the rest of the tube up and out so that it's draping over the water level. Next, you're just gonna let go of the tube and gravity's gonna do all the work and start the siphon for you. Now that the siphon's going, simply maneuver your tube around the inside of your tank to clean up any loose debris that might be floating around. Now, if you have a lot of fish and shrimp inside your tank, be careful that you don't suck them up. But if you do, don't freak out about it, it's all right. They're being taken down the siphon tube and into that bucket where you can net them out and put them back in the tank shortly. When doing a water change, I like to drain between 40 and 50% of the tank water and then refill that with fresh, clean water at the end. Now to fill the tank, I usually just grab a watering can or a very large cup and find a spot where I can pour the water in gently enough that it's not gonna disturb everything. If you've got a bigger tank, then you can use a different method and maybe use a pump or to do a siphon straight from your sink into that. Now when keeping aquariums, where you live is actually a very important thing to consider. In the town that I live in, I have very nice tap water. So I just use straight tap water from my sink and put it into my tanks. If your city has hard water, then you're gonna to wanna to consider using RO water instead. So make sure to do your research on what kind of water your city has so that you're able to provide a happy and healthy environment for your fish and plants. Once the tank is filled, you're all done. Just simply clean up your mess and wipe down that glass. Enjoy your tank. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you learned something along the way. Please keep in mind that this is my routine of how I maintain a planted aquarium. And if you have a different workflow, I'd love to hear it down in the comments below. 
There is no right or wrong way to do this. This is just my simple way of doing five steps to maintaining a planted aquarium. I hope you have a great rest of your day. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and do so. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.